Hello and welcome again to another episode of Battle Ready. Ready. Where today ready, ready, ready. we thought we'd talk about one of the one of our favorite parts about the Warhammer hobby, and that is lore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is lore. Um, one of the things that's pretty cool about all the armies is not only do you have a bunch of ogres or gold knights or Knigets. you know what whatever. But they all have this background, this story, this fluff that sort of follows them around. Ooh, fluffy. And in, in my mind, at least, it really lets you sort of dig in to the narrative and see little stories play out on your game, on your tabletop. Right? It's one thing for one army to kill another. That happens, sure. But it's sort of cool to see these little vignettes, these little little narratives play out. I really like it. Yeah. You like the lore? So today we thought That's we one would, of the reasons I play an army is their lore. For sure. So today we thought we would rank our top five picks for best lore. Couple rules, couple caveats though. One, we're not including any armies where we don't own the battle tome. Mm-hmm. There is so, some little shenanigans otherwise. So there is uh we own twelve battle tomes. That's only about half the armies. Yeah. So if your army is not in our top five. It's that okay. could be a reason, right? And also, even of the 12 that we have, we're only picking five. And that doesn't mean that the other seven mm-hmm. are all bad or dumb or ugly. It just means that, you know, our preference, mm-hmm. we're going to go for the top five. I'm assuming our preferences are varied. There's a little bit of variation. Yeah. How did you know? Because uh, you showed me your list earlier. Why did I do that? So we're going to go through it. But first, I wanted to do an honorable mention. And the reason it's an honorable mention is because everything I read about them, and I've read some, I've seen some lore stuff, I've read some lore stuff, I've uh, read they were in um, Ghoul Slayer, and that's Flesh Eater Courts. We don't have that battle tome, so they're not allowed to make the list, but I wanted to put them in as an honorable mention because their whole thing... Standing ovation. Is, <laughs> oh, we're supposed to stand up for this. <laughs> Standing ovation. Their whole thing is that they're but just a bunch of murderous cannibals. slavering cannibal ghouls right that's what they are but kind they've like been gorgeous. In, yeah yeah it's like if everything was a gorger right everything but is gorgeous they have you know, they've been infected with this blood disease where they think in their minds that they are these royal kings nope. and that they are royal knights and uh that they're this honorable faction and it's really sort of cool i like that in the lore, they see themselves, the, you know, they see themselves almost as like an order army. That they are representing yeah. kings and queens and believe in fealty and and believe in knightly duties and that sort of thing. But really, <laughs> You're a killer. if they could see clearly, and they always have at the end of a battle, a great feast to celebrate their victory. They're just eating people. But they're just eating the dead, for sure. And so that's sort of cool. I really like that. I think that's super duper neat. So I couldn't go through it and not mention them. Mm-hmm. But they're also not included in our top five because I don't have the battle tome. They don't with, make it. Without reading it myself, I'm a little bit hesitant to go all in on something. So let's start us off with number five. Drake, your fifth favorite lore person. Seraphon. Seraphon. Interesting. So what is it about the Seraphon that you like? I like that they're just lizard men riding dinosaurs. What more could you want? But that's not lore. That's just that's just a cool thing they do. What about their lore? Do you? Like? I like that they sort of have a greater plan. Yeah, the great plan is sort of a cool thing. But yeah. they they don't know it. They have something to do, but they don't know how to do it. Sort of yeah. like if you zone out in school and you have, uh, <laughs> you come back to it later. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, and especially what's interesting is the. The Saurus and the Skinks have no idea, right? Yeah, they, and the Slan are only partially sure. They're only interpreting the Great Plan. <laughs> so right? they might be. They wrong. don't even know what the Great Plan is. The old ones that they come from may create the plan. Here's and my the theory. The Slan just sort of are trying to figure it out and then passing it along. Here's my theory: the people who made uh, Warhammer AOS are the old ones. You think? You think those humans the are the old ones? So I think that that's good. That's a good pick. Then Seraphon are not on my list, but I do like their lore. So my number five, everybody's favorite, the Soul Blight Grave Lords. So the reason I like Soul Blight, are they on your list at all? Your list of five? No. No. Okay. The reason I like Soul Blight is because the 
I like the idea of these different death factions and they all, well, not all, but most of them sort of hate each other. Like the Legion of Night and the Legion of Blood. In fact, at the end of the Broken Realm saga, yeah. Manfred von Karstein, it, uh, what's her name? Neferata goes this way to do something for Nagash. Yeah. Manfred goes this way to do something for Nagash. And then Manfred like sneaks back and attacks <laughs> the, uh, Never. Neferata's territory to like claim it. So I like that. And I also like the idea of there are these vampires, right? Then they're endless and ageless and powerful and magical. And I like that they're just, they are up here. They're up in the clouds. They're scheming, scheming, scheming. And then they don't actually, most of them, get their hands dirty. What they do is summon a million undead and be like, all right, you guys go, you do it. You go fight. That's how it worked in our You're meaningless to me. That's how it worked in our game. Our person literally just told her drink and was like, get over there. Yep, this guy. She was literally pointing. Like, just pointing over there, over there with you. So I really like that. I like the idea of a faction that is, because most uh, allegiances, most armies have sub-factions. All they, they all have sub-factions. Uh-huh. But mostly it's like the Caradron, where this city likes trade a little bit more, and this city likes tradition a little bit more, or the Stormcast, where this host is a little bit more into paladins, and this host... Is it can be a little bit crueler and this, you know, but they're all sort of, they're all very much on mm-hmm. the same team. And I like that the soul blight, they're, they're not so very much on the same team. They sort of, they sort of are five different factions all doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. Plus I'm sure others that are not part yeah. of a major faction. I think that the, uh, what's the dynasty we play? Virkos. Virkos dynasty? Point. They don't care what everyone's doing. They're just doing their own thing. Yeah, that's, they don't, they that's don't. sort of cool, too. It's like they're not part of the greater tribe yeah. of soul blight. They're like their own thing, their own vampire, and they've got their own goals. And I, I sort of like that. I like that it's fragmented a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I also like that, at least lore-wise, they are all trying to scheme as much as they can and get as much power for themselves as they can without offending the gash and getting swashed <laughs> so they're like they're all playing this game where they want to get as high as they can while staying under the nagash squash bar <laughs> so i like that all right number four number four what is your number four orc orc war clans you know what that is also my number four so we've got a match on that one orc yeah! war clans. so why do you like it I like them because they're just run up and smash with three different factions on how to run up and smash. <laughs> you just run up and smash in three different ways. Well, that's certainly how they play or can play. That's certainly how they can play. But what do you like about their story? What do you like about their lore? I like that they basically have nothing to do with each other. The three factions? Yes. That's interesting. They're almost I, like vampires. I like them. So I'll put an addendum. I do like that Iron Jaws are very distinct from Cruel Boys, which are very distinct from Bone Splitters. I do like that. But I also like that it's not just run up and smash. Mm-hmm. One of the things that is intriguing to me about the Oryx is even though they're very separate, they all can you know feel the primal beat and they can all come together in a big wah. Very nice. And that's one thing that I like is every time there's a wah, it's an orc running it. Ah! Right? I mean, sometimes there's been grots in the lore. Sometimes grots have run it. The lore said. Yeah, if you say so. I can't <laughs> think of any. Lore, I mean, there's wahs. definitely grots in it. But even on the Siege and Excelsis, right, it's an orc running it. Now, he has the Loon King with him. He has other people with him. But the orcs seem to be like the embodiment of the wah. And I really like that. I like that the wah is inherently orky with other destruction things sort of coming on top of it. So it's not just that they love to smash, because frankly, if that's all they were, they wouldn't, I still, I still think it's cool, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't have made my list. What I like is that they all have this ethos of, of carnage, of destruction, of battle. Of and they're wah. like, yeah, they're like the, Different the ways true to children of Gorka Morka, where they're very in tune to that. And I, I really like it. And the most important thing, they have marine skin. Is that the most important thing? Yes. Okay, I guess that's the most important thing. <laughs> you have to have green skin. All right, number three. Since that was both of our number four, number three. Ogre. Ogres. Did we match again? We did not match again. Ah. Ogres. What do you like about the ogres? 
They just eat. They just eat. They th- they see Thanksgiving as every day. Yes, I do like that. And you know what's cool about that is that the the need to eat is it's two things, right? On the first, it's almost I don't know if you would call it a curse or or what, but they they have to eat to survive, right? I mean, all of us do. All the but not as much as an ogre does, right? <laughs> Ogres are constantly eating. But at the same time, I like that they view eating as like this religious experience, right? It's it's in part how they worship Gorkamorka, yeah, right? Which I think makes sense. I also like that um, they included starvelings in the lore, in the form of gorgers. Starvelings? Yeah, that's what that's how they refer to the gorgers in there. Oh, okay. Part. Yeah, that is cool too. You because can't... you get to see what it what an ogre looks like who doesn't eat or who can't eat. Who can't taste, mm. to be more specific. So that that is pretty cool. My number three is everybody's favorite. Again? Again. The Daughters of Cain. I think the Daughters of Cain lore is phenomenal. Because you have this murder cult, right? And all they they just love murder and they love unlike orcs who just want to get in a brawl, the daughters of Cain are very technical in their fighting. They want to display finesse and technique. But I love that layered on top of this murder cult <laughs> is the fact that Marathi has them all lied to, right? <laughs> she has told them all, oh yeah, we're all in this murder cult together. We all want to worship Cain. We're the daughters of Cain. Uh... But in reality, <laughs> she has taken over. She has used that power to ascend to godhood. The story of the daughters of Cain it's been, uh, has advanced Maybe the most of any faction, or at least among the top factions, for how far their story has has gone. I think Stormcast is the most because they're like the main character. I don't know. I don't know that they've evolved that much. I mean, but the the daughters of Cain have gone from Marathi pretending to be High Oracle to Marathi now controlling everything to Marathi becoming a god, right, and still controlling to Marathi taking over cities of Sigmar. Which is not no bueno. Yeah, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for the order There's faction. Four point oh. There's gonna be another. It's gonna be Stormcast versus Daughters. Probably not. <laughs> it's but, gonna be Stormcast versus Daughters. Order versus order. But it might be order versus order. That's what I'm calling. But I think that that lore behind it is is just very cool, and how you've got the murder cult girls, but you've also got the snake ladies that are sort of like Marathi's dudes. Yeah, they've been created by her. Marathi's a clique. I really like it. Yeah, it's clique. I really like how Marathi is uh, is just conniving and fooling everyone. And the cool thing is... Conniving. Yes. Conniving. The cool thing is, if Marathi, you know, if someone, if the murder cult were to find out that they had been lied to, it would cause an, I mean, they would implode, right? It would be a huge deal. So Marathi's... You know, holding on to power with an iron fist, but is also walking a careful line. Walking She's holding power line. with a rusty iron fist. For if that iron fist were to break, she would get decimated. Well, that would be the question. So many witch elves. I think she would certainly lose her power, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't put it past Marathi to make it out of there alive and hold up somewhere else in Ulgu and consolidate her power. <laughs> I think she. I think she. I think she'd still survive. Uh, but the Shadow Queen... That's the same person. Yeah, I know. But like her big boy uh-huh. version of her. Yeah, in fact, in the lore, the Shadow Queen has started doing things without Marathi's permission. Oh, no. They're going to so, fight each other. So the question is like, what does that mean? <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> that's going to happen. For now, that's just sort of a tidbit that's out there, but we'll see. All right. Number two, Nurulus. Night Hunt. Night haunt. All right. What do you like about the night haunt? They are ghosts that, in the lore, it says nearly every person is a night haunt now in the underworld. <laughs> nearly sure. everyone who dies. Sure. And so that leads me to believe how do you kill them? Like, mm-hmm. how do you get, how do you beat that? Because if you lose a, like a couple soldiers in a fight, those couple soldiers come back to fight you. So you lost numbers and they gained numbers. Yeah. Like, how are you supposed to beat that? So the Night Hunt are quite prevalent. I also like that most of the Night Hunt units are condemned in some way. Yes. Like they're being punished for something they did in their life. Twisted justice. And uh, that's sort of cool that all of these 
all of these souls, all of these ghosts were, did something bad. And it doesn't necessarily mean something bad. It means uh, something bad in the eyes of Nagash, mm -hmm. right? And that's different because he doesn't always look at things the right way. <laughs> but <laughs> that's sort of cool Nagash. that you've got this whole, like Nagash has this army that he's using to fight with that he's also sort of torturing <laughs> at the same time. It really is sort of cool. I, I definitely like the Nightlord. Mm -hmm. My number two, ogres. Ogres are back, baby. The I, only reason I ranked ogres as number three is because I had two factions that I just thought were better. Yeah, of course. Of course. But I would have, the ogres sit right on the fence. So ogres are oh good, not only for what we discussed before, but because I like the how much of eating is part of them. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's not completely unique, but uh, unusual in the ogre book is how willing and eager they are to become mercenaries. Mm -hmm. that, that are, I think is cool. There are ogre mercenaries. So it's, it wouldn't be unusual to find an ogre on a pirate ship uh -huh. or an ogre band. There are actually ogre mo pirate models. There's oh, yeah. an ogre pirate model. There's an ogre pirate model. And the mercenaries are depicted in game as man eaters. That's what the man eater yep. one is. But it's, it's cool that the ogres have this belief in this lifestyle and they're hungry or they're being chased by the Everwinter or whatever. But at the same time, they can leave their tribe. Mm -hmm. and go adventure and then come back to the tribe at some later point. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of cool. Yeah. I think it's cool that you have somebody that sort of leaves and comes back and you don't see that in a lot of other factions. Mm -mm. I think you might see that in Fire Slayers. You might see that in a couple places. Maybe some dwarves. But it's pretty unusual. Mm -hmm. It's pretty unusual. Another thing that I liked is like in the first couple things, it said, <clears throat> they say an army marches on its stomach, but a man eater marches because of it. Yeah, for sure. He needs to eat. He needs also, to get some food. Also, another thing I find cool is that their most valued as asset is their stomach, not their club. Their stomach. Well, that's what needs. That's what feeds them, right? They lose the stomach. That's mm. the gorger life for them. <laughs> it's not my stomach. It's just caved in. All right, that takes us to the number one coolest lore, funnest lore, most interesting lore in all first. of Age of Sigmar. No, you go first. You've been going first this whole time. <laughs> I want to see what the best for last. Go for it. Gloom Spike Gets! The Gets. The Gets! Yeah, I didn't think it'd be... I, I knew it would be Gets for Drake. Drake is... As everything that is Gets is Drake's love. So uh, I knew Gets would be coming up. So tell us a little bit what, what's so cool about their lore. That I like that they can intermix. Mm -hmm. But they're mostly off doing their own thing. The Spider Fang and the Moon Clan are off doing their own stuff. And the trolls are trolling up the place. <laughs> And the squigs of Sorda are more closely related to the Moon Clan than the Spider Fang, mm -hmm. because the squigs are used as food, mounts, sometimes mining. I think. Sure, they can have a lot of uses. I think I think Gets is a fun one. Gets is super duper fun. It's uh, it sort of goes into this line of like creepy insanity, creepy insanity, yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's too bad because the models on the table don't always represent the lore super good. Yeah. Although maybe that'll change with the new Battle Tome coming out. But if you read um, Gloomspite, it's a, uh, one of the novels, mm -hmm. super good. It makes you really feel like, oh, I can see why these guys yeah. are... Scary. Why they're serious business. Not And when you play them on the table, they're just guys who run around being insane. Yeah, the table doesn't pa capture it yet. <laughs> maybe the third Bat 3.0 Tome will. You better. But in the lore... They are very creepy. And I like how they're mostly, whether it's the troll or the moon clan or whatever, mm -hmm. they're mostly not that scary yeah. until the bad moon comes. Mm -hmm. And then they're insane, frightening, mm -hmm. right? And then they, you take these little guys that individually are not that big of a threat, mm -hmm. but they just go into a frenzy under the bad moon. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of them. And it can it gets real bad real quick. My theory is that Gorka Morka turned into the Bad Moon. Do you think the Bad Moon is Gorka Morka? Yeah. Okay. Helping his diminutive servants more than his big boys. <laughs> all right. All right. Also, one thing I find interesting mm -hmm. is that the Gloomspite have figured out how to survive. And in the Ogre's lore, the Underguts worked with Gloomspite, have joined their raid several times. Mm -hmm. So that means, and in fact... In the Ogre's Alliance thing, they can't ally with Gloomspite. Oh, that's cool. But I think it said Trogos only. 
They only oh, like yeah, trucks. Oh, yeah, it's Trogoths only. <laughs> we only want the trucks. Well, if you're going to come to our place, you better be big. Because the, <laughs> the ogres, they have they, they already have knoblars. Yeah. So they don't need uh, more people that are going to come be crazy under a bad mm-hmm. mood. I mean, technically, the rockets do have big stomachs. Yeah, there you go. They fit right in. <laughs> All right, so my number one is Stormcast. I knew it. I think the Stormcast lore is so good. Now, that doesn't mean I think they're the best army to play, and that doesn't mean that, you know, especially the early books were maybe not so great. <laughs> and But they have benefited, one, from having a lot of books, so there's a lot more lore. They've had every book. But two, one thing I think is so cool is how, even though they keep coming back again and again and again, they lose pieces of themselves every yeah. time they do. And uh, I cool. love that as a lore tidbit. Because that has zero impact on the game. <laughs> none zero. None. There is no representation of that in the game Because that would all. be hard to represent. But it's still a very human understanding because you get these, these characters that they can't be human. physically killed Yeah. because they'll just come back. But, they'll be but you can still kill who they are uh-huh. because they lose a piece of who they are uh-huh. every single time. I feel like there should I think be that's cool. some Stormcast model. That like w- represent what they are when they've gone when they've just gone too far when they've been reforged one too many times. Maybe yeah, because there is lore about if they get reforged too many times, they their soul sort of gets imprisoned in his ear, mm-hmm. so because they they can't they can't go work anymore. anymore. Yeah. So and I would like this you know what else is cool about the Stormcast is that the Stormcasts are all plucked up right before they die, right? Yeah. And the vast majority weren't praying to Sigmar at the time, mm-hmm. right? But Sigmar still snatches them and puts them on the anvil of apotheosis, turns them into a sword cast, and then sends them out to battle. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, you could look at it as they've been like, um, what do you call it, drafted. They get forced into a war that they weren't, you know, they didn't volunteer for the war. And then the fact that they're all super pro Sigmar after they're uh, reforging, it's like, well, what's going on there? Are you, really, as part of the reforging, are you mind you know, brainwashing these people. Is Sigma really e- secretly evil? Well, I don't know if he's, he's just super anti-chaos. Yeah. And I think he's willing to do Bad very things. questionable things mm-hmm. in order to fight chaos. Yeah. So, but that's, that's why I sort of like it is that they're very powerful. They're the good guys and that they're fighting. They're really chaos. the only good guys. In- but at the same time, they're very tragic figures because mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. losing themselves. For the most part, they didn't volunteer for the war. They see they have to fight chaos, so they see these horrors. It's literally uh, sometimes. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting. I really like that lore. Like I said, not a lot of that is displayed on the tabletop, mm-hmm. or I don't think you really could for most of that. Yeah, I, but I think the lore, the story behind it, is just super duper cool. Mm-hmm. I like the Stormcast story. Yeah. All right, cool. That is our top five picks, best lore. In AOS, best lore of the 12 battle tomes we have. For In our opinion. In our, in our opinion, of course, right? And so if you like a different one, great. If you look at it and you think I'm crazy for picking Stormcast, <laughs> let me know. If you have somebody else, especially somebody like Fire Slayers or Ideneth or Korn or any, Korn of those, cool. any of those other ones that you like that maybe we don't have the battle tome for, mm-hmm. let us know. The only ones I didn't pick, so we have Slanesh. Zinch and Nurgle, and all of them are, are cool. All of them are fine. No chaos in this list. But no chaos, and part of the reason is those those are our only chaos armies, right? So maybe beasts or slaves or Corn. Skaven would have been would have been cool. But the three chaos, at least the three that we have, it's like, well, Nurgle is diseasey, so everyone loves disease and they're hopeless. <laughs> Zinch loves magic, so everyone loves magic and schemes. You know, they they sort of. They might have a cool note, but they sort of have one note and just slam it over and over again. Um, which is not to say that it's not good. I still like all those factions and I still play them and uh-huh. collect them mm-hmm. and I think they're super fun. But if they're just wouldn't be in my top five for yeah. best lore. Cool. All right. Well, definitely comment below. Let us know what your favorite uh, faction is lore wise. And uh, I'll be interested to see. This has been another episode of Battle Ready. Thanks so much for watching. 